Press play. There's the magic finger. Pressing down. Yeah. The Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett. We've got a show that you'll never forget. Forget, forget. Greetings, Grapple fans, and welcome to WFMU's Wrestling Club, the only space that's safe for all wrestling fans, whether you're casual, lapsed, obsessed. My what? name is Darren. I'm in Jersey City. What's going on? I'm getting all kinds of stuff going on here. <laughs> Everything's going wild. Uh, <laughs> we got to start over. <laughs> what happened? What is wrong? I don't know. It's... <laughs> Why did you what what was wrong? It was fine. Yeah, Brett, what are oh, you doing? Oh, okay. Yeah. You sent the wrong start, one. It started playing on on my uh I got the live stream open and <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> we're live? Are we live? Are we live on the on the yeah, tube? We're live. Absolutely. Okay. Well, never mind. <laughs> no, let's let, let's start clean. Let's start yeah. clean. Uh, that's fine. Great. <laughs> hey, this is just a little sneak peek for our, uh, thanks for joining our Patreon guys. It's really nice. Press play. There's the magic finger. Pressing down. Yeah. The Wrestling Club with Darren and Brett. We've got a show that you'll never forget. Forget, forget. Greetings, Grapple fans, and welcome to WFMU's Wrestling Club, the only space that's safe for all wrestling fans, whether you're casual, lapsed, obsessed, or ashamed. My name's Darren. I'm broadcasting in the illustrious Jersey City, New Jersey, the best city in New Jersey, and I'm joined via satellite by the big Stevie Cool to my the blue guy, Mr. Brett Davis. Brett, we had a little bit of a false start there, but you know what? We're get, we're going to get it back. Oh, we're get, yeah. We're build some momentum. You know, I feel like a lot of these episodes start with us saying, wow, something crazy just happened. But this one is... A, oh, my goodness. Very special. Uh, things things were crazy. We're, this is the this is an Inferno edition of WFMU's Wrestling Club. Yeah, very, very apropos for WWE storylines lately. There's been a lot of uh, people set on fire. Uh, we, we were just about to begin... Uh, one of our guests. I'll, I'll save the the proper intro for uh, Matt in a second. But uh, Bardia Salimi was going to be on. Uh, man upstairs, Isaiah, just ready to r- click stream. And what what happens? But um, I guess Bardia, there's some sort of fire alarm, and he said, "Oh, I think the I think the building's on fire." <laughs> <laughs> And you know, it's if if you know Barty, it's sometimes like okay, Barty, I don't think it's on fire, but <laughs> there uh, was smoke. There was visible smoke. Yeah. Oh no! Here's the clip. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> yep, that's that's uh, the the sight uh, for those watching, for those listening. That's a that's a real uh, New York City yeah, that's fire. Like a, yeah, that's like a three alarm fire right there. I saw flames shooting out of the top of a building. Yeah, oh, no. Bardia, geez, this so, isn't good. Bar- Every Bardia's, time I... Bardia's fine. The 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 whole Salimi family is uh, accounted for. Okay, so. goodness, goodness gracious. Well, let's. We're just gonna send out a re- some wrestling club well wishes to yeah. Bardia and his 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 whole lot. Yeah, but uh, thank you, thank you to the man upstairs, Isaiah, for <laughs> being <laughs> quick and resetting everything. Uh, last second, uh, Isaiah, I, I owe you uh, I, for the Christmas uh, special. I, I I gave you a bunch of uh, WWE ice cream bars, and Darren told me that they are uh, not edible. <laughs> They're soft. They're only soft. They're like gelatin. Yeah. So wh- not... what happened? What happened to the ice cream bars? Okay. I thought Darren said he fed them to the feral cats outside. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, you know, I had my share as well there, pal. That's and true. They weren't, that's true. And they weren't feral cats. They're a family of the baddest uh, city raccoons you'll ever find. These are like 40 pound behemoths. But we're going to, you know, we're just going to, it's, we're a little, we got, we're kind of, uh, kind of a little, uh, I'm a little shooken up. I think, yeah. you know, this is nuts. This is wild. But, uh, party says, well, I guess I'm fucked now. So, oh no. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll, we'll update you with live, this is, you know, breaking news. Um, however, <laughs> I don't want to distract from our guest, uh, a very special guest this week. Uh, someone who's been in the uh, in the bowels of of uh, Ch- Ch- Cherry Cherry Lane Drive. What is it? Uh, West Main Street. Okay, West Main Street. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it might be East. I don't remember. It's Main Street though, which always shocked me. But yeah, yes, uh, Main uh, Street America. A, a, a uh, member of WWE Creative. Uh, someone whose occupation was putting smiles on faces, uh, and also a great filmmaker, a comedy person, writer. Uh, Matt Weir is joining us. Welcome hey. to the show. Hey guys, thanks for having hey, me Matt. on. Oh, hey, I'm guys. so excited. Yeah, uh, thank you for that. Uh, when you said the bowels of WWE, I, you're right because they made us park on the lowest level, and uh, on that level, Vince had a uh, like a some custom car in a bubble, so nobody could touch it or breathe on it. But we were down there with that. <laughs> okay, that's normal. Yeah, that's a yeah. good place to start. Very normal bus. Yeah. Same guy. <laughs> yeah, Darren once uh, drove me for a job interview at the the, the headquarters. So you I been, stayed. Yeah. I stayed in the parking lot that you're uh, uh, referencing. But uh, yeah, yeah, I love taking. Uh, what is that? Is that 95 up through uh, from Jersey up to Boston? You go right by it. You see it right there. All the flags up. Oh yeah, Titan Tower is like right off five, and I think I heard they're moving to downtown Stanford. So, I heard that as well. Uh, great for downtown Stanford, I guess. Right. Yeah. Bo- business will be booming. Uh, guys <laughs> like tru- me. <laughs> it truly looks like if you if you've never seen the WWE logo before, it looks like a super villain's lair. It's just this giant black building with like black flags and this like you know scratch symbol or now like zigzag symbol yeah uh, it's very surreal so we, we have so many questions and you know we've we've peppered you with questions before but now oh, i should i should say if you <laughs> if you have any questions for matt about wwe creative if you want to thank him for the years of entertainment he's provided you you can give us a call on the hotline at 732-200-CLUB uh yeah yeah, so uh, let's let's get a little background. What what's your uh, entree into the world of pro wrestling? What was the first thing you ever saw? I honestly, I obviously in like mid '80s at some point when I was like three or four, Hulk Hogan, Ultimate Warrior, Jake the Snake, and Rowdy Piper were somehow just I had action figures. You know, wrestling was huge in the '80s, um, and then as it went on, Attitude Era and all that was. Obviously into Stone Cold. Sting was like my guy. Like I followed that whole year to like that terrible match at Starcade. Um, it was hooked. It was an ECW guy. I grew up close enough to Philadelphia, so got that. Like you know, there'd be some channel at one in the morning. Static would show up, and then like I remember Perry Saturn. I think had a broken leg, but still like leg dropped a Dudley through a table. I was like, what the hell is this? But. uh Anyway, yeah, I grew up, I actually wanted to be a professional wrestler. Like, I was like, I'm going to be it. And, you know, where I grew up, everybody's like, you know, it's fake, right? Or you're never going to be big enough to be those guys. Um, So, you know, when I was a little kid, that was like the dream. Uh, And then uh, got into, later on, you know, did some acting, comedy and stuff. And kind of hid that I was a wrestling fan. Because, you know, you know how it is as a wrestling fan. I'm sure everybody that listens can agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. This is no what the shame. Sh- it's truly the show uh, exploring this. I, yeah. I I hit it for years too, and once once the lockdown hit, I was like, let me just lean into my personality flaw. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I think you were you weren't hiding it. I mean, you know, 
Yeah, it we're was on the front page of the, the New York time. Times that I'm a wrestling <laughs> fan. I'll just well, say that. That's 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 true. It's it says that I'm obsessed. World. Brett Davis is obsessed with wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everybody knows that now. It's I mean, have you dated since then? Because that was always the thing when we were little kids. Oh, I mean, we're kids, so what are, what kind of dating were we doing? But mm-hmm. you know. Well, I was doing pretty good for myself. I don't know what you guys were doing. <laughs> my my girlfriend now loves it. Like I got her into it. I <sighs> I showed her. Uh, it was brave. Give me versus... some tips, dude. I honestly, it was she saw Bray Wyatt and the Undertaker, and she was so fascinated. She's like, "Wait, what? This is an element of this. This like these mysterious like dead men, you know, whatever." And uh, that like won her over. She saw like the. She saw it wasn't just like a bunch of like meatheads beating each other up, I guess. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah, but it yeah. is. Sure. I, I mean, I honestly, uh, from going from the comedy world to that, it was like, oh, these are performers too. Like the way they would come back after a match and ask for uh, notes was like, oh, I used to do this with people whose shows I would direct. And it was weird because, I mean, there was one time I definitely gave a note that was just, like, oh, it was great. And the guy was like, no, it wasn't. I'm like, my career could be over. What the fuck are you saying? Don't lie to me. And that's when I was like, okay, uh, that whole, like, I'll say New York City sketch comedy, like, hey, great. Like, I was like, don't bring that here because they want, mm. they'll kill me if I give them a note that's nice, but they don't want it. Yeah. If that makes sense. No, it absolutely makes sense. I, I mean, yeah, doing improv and sketch comedy, it's like, you know, a combination of the two is exactly what wrestling is. Just it's physical. Um, but yeah, there's still that <laughs> the same insecurity that you'll find in the comedy scene. And like, you know, all, all, all that, it, just so many different parallels. Um, right. So how did, how did you get from the writing side of things to the, or sorry, the, the, the comedy side of things to the WWE? Um, so uh, I, at one point, there was like a MTV show that I had written some stuff. Oh no! Oh no! We lose Matt. And uh, we just talked. Oh, we what was that? We lost you for a second. Okay. We lost you for a second. All right, all right. Let me know if I go out. I'm right next to my router. I'll uh, <laughs> pop it right back on. Hold on, fans. Um, but yeah, there was a there was a guy that was a uh, also a wrestling fan. We talked about it a lot, and then he had some stuff for the network. Like this is right when the WWE Network came out, and uh, at one point they needed new sketches for the Edge and Christian Totally Reeks of Awesomeness show or whatever it is. And they honestly, it was so it was like some guy emailed me and said, "I heard you're a sketch writer. Could you write sketches for these people?" And I was like, "Okay, <laughs> sure." And it was like maybe seven sketches and like. You know, I wrote that in like a day and sent it to him. And I got all I got was great. We'll send you a check. And then I think they've used three of them, but it was changed drastically. And now knowing what I know, I'm like, OK, that makes sense. I get what they mm-hmm. Um But yeah, that was it. Like I did that. And then at one point they were just like, do you want to submit storylines? And so I uh, I started sending stuff and the first one I sent, I remember the email was like Vince didn't like any of these. He thought they were trash but you guys can do them over again. And I think that's that's a technique they use because it took like six months to get hired and it was a lot of getting calls and them scaring you out of the job, telling you like, it's this is going to be your life. Uh, you know, at a certain point, they tell you they don't want marks because if you mark out, like uh, <laughs> they're going to smell that and kick you out right away. Um, so you hide, you hide it all. Everybody hides it if they can. But um at a certain point, I, I pitched something that was uh, AJ Styles and the Gallows and Anderson had finally shown up and they wanted to take out John Cena. And this became the beat up John Cena thing. And I, that's what I'm guessing what got me the job. But then I showed up like right after that. So or I got hired after that. Are, are you publicly taking responsibility for the catchphrase beat up John Cena? No, because I didn't write okay. that exactly. <laughs> I can't do that. Fair but, enough. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, I, I I take credit for pitching that idea. And then when I went in for the meeting, they, I like my story went to where like Randy Orton and Triple H joined forces with Cena to take on the club. And they were like, this is great, but Hunt, or it was Paul will never do that. And that's the first time I heard Paul. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We've talked a lot of, on the show about Mark, 
but we have yet to really get <laughs> dig into Paul. Paul, uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, and and yeah, we're so so what yeah what what is the like writers' room <laughs> of WWE like exactly like what 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 is the like SNL, you know, you get there on yeah. Monday and you write your sketches or you, you you get you pitch things on Tuesday and then you stay overnight on Wednesday and then by Saturday you have a show. What's the WWE week look like? All right. So we'll start with the pitching where when I was there, uh, Raw was Monday, SmackDown was still Tuesday. So Wednesday was like technically the fly back home day. But then also if you're on the road team, you're at home writing. Uh, we're coming up like each I was on SmackDown and NXT for most of my time there. And so like you uh, you'll have like uh, you basically have to pitch your show like you come up with your 16 segments for SmackDown. And uh, I forget how many Raw had. There's like three hours to fill, which is I was happy I wasn't on Raw because that was I felt bad for a lot of those writers. There's so much time to fill and you guys watch the show i'm sure every week yeah they need to every single minute you can't yeah. miss it you can't miss it that's right yeah so the common thing was if you're on raw it's just banging your head in the wall to come up with three hours but anyway wednesday was coming up with your own show and for me it was uh i would meet with sometimes meet with road dog who was the head writer of smackdown and the lead writer sit in his office and just pitch wednesdays were fun because you could laugh Thursdays were a little tighter because not only did you have to have a solid show, but you had to go up to Vince. And that was the day where he finally saw what was going to happen the next week. And sometimes uh, they'd have meetings with Vince until like four in the morning um, because he would say, all right, we're going to have meetings at 6 p.m. And then his assistants come down every like half hour, every hour. Um, He's pushing it back an hour, pushing it back. He had no, no care for personal time for anyone. I mean, that's like most writer, like any show you write on. Right. Like, you're usually like have true, to, true. to like deal with the guy until 4 a.m. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, uh, <laughs> but yeah, and that's the thing, too. He always you're always kind of expected to be on call like they give you your own phone. Um, I wrote all the pay-per-views the whole time I was there. And uh, that was like kind of the thing that made me hate it right away because it was I saw it as like, oh, this is like super grunt work. And I get to um, I get to like put certain things in the pay per views, like interviews and stuff. But then I have to set up the kickoff shows that nobody watches, or I had to. And uh, oh, so do you watch these? <laughs> well, I know Brett does. Oh yeah, I, I'm a completist uh, with some yep. of these things. Okay. Yeah, uh, the kickoff off. shows always have like a killer Paul Heyman promo. Yeah, um, some uh-huh. weird banter. Uh, Our truth. Booker T going shucky ducky quack quack. Yeah, uh-huh. which I still don't understand, and I love book and like he was. Well, I got really. There's a comedian to... whose name was Shucky Ducky, and his catchphrase was Shucky Ducky quack quack. Never knew this. <laughs> it was he was like a Def, Jeff Jam, or at least like a show Tim at the Apollo, like a he appeared on. Yeah. Okay. Early nineties. <laughs> so that's that. I, I just I just was like, all right, this is a thing Booker says, and there's so many things in the wrestling world that are said, and you're just like, yeah, okay, great. And uh, <laughs> at least they have something to say, right? Yeah, I mean, it comes out of Michael Hayes' mouth, and you're just like, okay, yeah, sure, right. Um, it's got to be true. Yeah, yeah, everything that everything that Michael Hayes says is fact. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, we've we've peppered you with questions before in the past, uh, but. <laughs> Most of them were about Michael Hayes. So let's get into that. Okay. I know Darren. Darren's excited. And oh, it, my goodness. It I... brought me nothing but joy to tell you guys some of these stories or try to catch him backstage, you know, when I could. Yeah. I get these like weird, like sort of like, like creep shots of Michael Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> or like I just see this like mustard colored blur. Uh-huh. Dude, it's that I my thing is whenever I think of him, I think of he had this like purple suit. And it, it made him look like Barney sure. the dinosaur. We've but that's like, I see him in that. Or in uh, Pittsburgh, he wore like a Yankee striped black and yellow suit. And he had a chipped tooth because he said he broke his tooth on a can of dog food trying to unlock his front door. <laughs> and we're all like, you were drunk and you fell on your face, dude. But No. <laughs> no, Freebird. Shut the fuck up, Mac. He used to call that's me Mac. That's the thing. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. Do you ever like, talk? Not do you ever talk? 
Sorry. You ever talk music with uh with uh, Michael Hayes? I did not. I did talk oh. about the Highlander movie though, because <laughs> it's my fucking movie. You're in it for three minutes, Michael. Yeah, well, I did not know he was in the Highlander movie. Well, you gotta tell me about this. Very beginning, uh, the Highlanders meeting his like you know the guy he's gonna fight in Madison Square Garden, but it's a wrestling event and the free it's the Freebirds. It's like Michael and all his glory. Go check it out. Wow. Like, you're, you're gonna love it. Wow. So is is that like the the month they worked for WWF? <laughs> yeah, it's just my, like well, Yeah, it was like I could see him at meetings making everybody watch it, and he's like, "Why are we watching this, Michael?" And he's like, "That's my fucking movie, Bang Bang Boom." I draw money, and then he just throws something. Usually, <laughs> <laughs> what he would do. Doesn't Edge have like a big role in like a Highlander sequel? He's probably oh. so jealous of that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I have to catch up on the Highlanders, especially if Edge is in it. So. We'll do a Highlander episode. Um, <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, like so. Some of these people that work on on you know the creative team are not you know lifelong wrestling fans. So like, <laughs> if there's somebody that's like sees Michael Hayes for the first time and he's wearing he's dressed like a cartoon a bird, pimp, yeah, a bird. cartoon pimp, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The thing is, like, you're not just seeing him, you're hearing him, and you're feeling him, and, like, he's coming... Are you, you smelling can... him? Sometimes, yes. And it's, <laughs> like, right. bourbon, or it's, like, you know, there's, there is, like, the locker room wrestler smell, especially, you know, with that dude. Uh, I mean, I can't say... I will say, I didn't really... Sometimes you had to go in the locker room, and this is, like, an old-school rule that I broke many times, and Big Show definitely threatened me, and Neville <laughs> kind of stepped up for me, and... Uh, yeah, there's some other stuff that happened, but I'm alive. But, um, oh no, I did. I had because every you know, the locker rooms are big, so you'd have to go get talent and you're supposed to knock and wait for somebody, but never nobody hangs out in there, so you sometimes will walk in. I've walked in on, I walked in on Arn Anderson in his underwear like seven times. <laughs> and it was always, boxers, boxers, or briefs, briefs, uh, He's a of course, guy. white, <laughs> yeah, white yeah. briefs, yeah, and I think, it was, oh man, he. What was it? Oh, kid, you caught me with my pants down again, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you have your own little sexy game. As a right develop, <laughs> buddy voice. <laughs> uh, now, now, what what is the like creative room look like? Because you, you've you've explained to me some some stories from, you know, like a big long table with Vince at, at the front. <laughs> Yeah, because that's where we want to get into for the the second half of this episode. Okay, uh, for, so writers' room is a <clears throat> big long room, long table. One this the raw side had raw stuff, and there's like dry erase walls, so they can because there's notes everywhere and just crazy shit everywhere. And I mean, you're honestly you're just churning out storylines and ideas, and most of them never see the light of day. And when I first got there, like the assignment every writer had to do, I think it was every week was take something from pop culture uh, and write a wrestling story based off of it. And I think I gave like Xavier Woods was going to do like a Karnak thing from Johnny Carson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't say which pop culture. <laughs> right. And that's the thing. The rule was like, Vince hasn't watched TV past like 1972. So he has no idea like what's on besides Sons of Anarchy, which apparently is a huge fan of. <laughs> yeah, which makes sense. He's like, oh, checks hunt. out. Yeah, that checks out. Oh, I got a bike for you for your entrance again. Oh, you're just <laughs> like Dax. Oh. anyway, um, to get back to the writers' room, yeah, big TV in the middle, and then a uh, ton of snacks, a lot of beef jerky, and Monster Energy drinks in that room. So, and a few Sweet. couches. Cool. Yeah, pretty nice, but very office. Or you know, corporate office. Yeah, what a creative environment. <laughs> right, very much so. And I mean, we were allowed to kind of walk around. Like we'd go to Road Dog's office, and that was just a small office. Uh, the two hundred five live room. When I wrote for that, we would do it in an open office so people could see in. And one of the ex writers, who was an ex wrestler, I don't know what he did. He took out some sort of pink powder and snorted it, and then pitched like a great idea. But. Uh, that was I, just have, I have my guesses. Yeah, I can't. Oh, he's my guy. I can't. I love him. I can't. I can't write him. Out. Is he See the that? kind of guy that would wear like paisley purple jacket and no shirt? Maybe I don't know. 
Uh, here, here's a quick update from Bardia. Uh, again, apologies to those listening to the podcast, but you can probably hear it. Oh, no. <laughs> no. I, oh. It's just, it's, uh, that smoke was, we'll see yeah. smoke uh, just billowing out of a building. A lot of smoke, yeah. A lot of smoke. Oh, goodness gracious. Poor Jesus. Wow. It's not Bardia's building, thankfully, but it's the the one next door. So oh, Okay, that's good. That's so he's good, out so. for safety. Yeah, hopefully everybody's safe. I know Bardia loves Kane. And, uh, you know, what a weird time to bring up, uh, you know, Inferno matches and whatnot. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> so he's, he's loving this. Yeah. This is just I thought like he was. I thought he was more so. of a. I, I thought he was a more of a Mayor Glenn Jacobs kind of guy, but maybe I, I just know Barty in a different way than you guys do. Well, he, he, yeah, he loved. He's like, why did Kane take the mask off? Why? And I was like, I don't know, man. I wasn't. That's there. true. Yeah. Did you ever pitch putting the mask back on him? He. I mean, uh, he wore a mask. <laughs> he just wore he a mask what? for like the past ten years. Yeah, right. he had the yes, one. It was. He had like the fake hair on it. It was just oh, like his old. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we've yeah. played clips on the show. He still like puts it on for like city council meetings and stuff. They'll do like little skits. Boy. <laughs> it's insane. He so, like, just... they'll, they'll turn red lights on and he'll choke slam like the head of like sports or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're getting real great representation in Knoxville. Yeah, I haven't really yeah. looked in on what's happening with him. I don't really. I figured he's like libertarian because that seemed to be a uh, like the vibe there. Oh, he just yeah, joined yeah. Parlor. Yeah, he just joined <laughs> yeah. Parlor right before they oh, shut no. down. Yeah, it's a real, uh, it's a real shame. I was really looking uh, forward to uh, Mayor Glenn uh, exercising his freedom of speech. Well, yeah. well speaking uh. speaking of politics, just for historical context, in case you're not listening to this this week, uh, this is the last week of Trump's presidency. Um, so far, uh, uh, not not crazy, but you know the inauguration has yet to happen yet. Uh, so this is the moment in time we're living in. We That's are right. post coup. We're, we're like in between insurrections right now. Yeah, uh, they they are threatening a, a, a one in every a one in every state. Uh, Everyone, come, yeah. That's uh, right. They're going local. They're going regional. Yeah. So so using this uh, uh, moment of peace, uh, you know, let's let's just let's let, take a look back at Donald Trump in the WWE. He was a celebrity guest at. Multiple WrestleMania. Well, he hosted. Well, he he hosted WrestleManias four and five, mm -hmm. which were Brad, WrestleMania five at the time. Hosting was the like as in Trump Plaza. Trump really Plaza, right? They were in Atlantic City, yeah. right? He was a special guest at WrestleMania seven. Uh, <laughs> WrestleMania Marla twenty. He told uh, Jesse Ventura, "Like, hey, I'm gonna run for president someday, maybe." Oh no! It did, wait, so it did start as a wrestling storyline. <laughs> wait, wait, what WrestleMania was that? WrestleMania 20 in 2004. Okay, yeah. wow. Uh, cool. Of course, there's the Battle of the Billionaires with uh, Bobby Lashley and Umaga, and they shave Vince's head. And, yeah. If know, if for some reason you're listening to this and you have not watched every second of the Battle of the Billionaires, please do because. Knowing it's a president now is so insane. If you're trumped out, I totally understand and save it for a rainy day. But it's it's truly insane. And you see the genesis of Trump, like playing in front of large crowds for the first time. He's Yeah, he does. He's not uh, as uh, quite as poised as he is now, you might <laughs> say. Uh, there's also, of course, the commercial free raw where he bought Trump raw, Trump raw where he bought raw from Vince McMahon and. Um, that was a great show. I mean, you know, if he governed like that, he gave the crowd, he gave them all free money. Uh, you know, he was just all about the, you know, he was about, uh, I mean, that was it. He was like very, uh, very giving. You said yeah, commercial absolutely. free. like Commercial no free. Com no, no, com no commercials. Yeah, they had. No uh, money from corporations. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's right. They had a, they had Kentucky grilled chicken that that Jim Ross and Todd Grisham were hawking, but you know that's a healthy alternative. Yeah, uh, honestly, he ran raw like Bernie. Yeah, <laughs> it's very very commendable. You know, he really could have. Uh, that's probably the be nicest thing I can say about Donald Trump is he wasn't the worst host of raw. Well, he was bad. I mean, his performance was terrible. His timing is bad. He's con every backstage segment. I'm sure this is a thing, Matt, in WWE. 
Uh, Every backstage segment, he's looking into the camera. Like he just has to glance at it. Like he's yeah. Hard. That's a that's a no no. But oh, also, that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah, yeah. You're not allowed. That's a big no. Why is he you, looking at the camera? Damn it! Like I've yeah, I've probably been yelled at for that because newer guys would just look over at you. But yeah, that's a no no. And he's not helperding. No. He's not like <laughs> mugging. Yeah. He's just no. like. Like, oh, there's a camera there. <laughs> like, just look up Trump meets the Boogeyman. Oh, that's which a Which is so one. dumb, because it's like, yeah. Boogeyman's supposed to be scary, and he's like, go get me a sandwich. <laughs> the best Trump in WWE story, though, is in 2007, Vince McMahon's limo explodes, and it's a who killed Vince McMahon, and the next day, Donald Trump calls WWE to find out if Vince is okay, he totally bought the storyline. He's not smart. <laughs> He's not smart. He's gullible. Like, and he was he was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, the year uh, they were in New York with uh, Bruno. MS, MSG booed him out of the building. Oh, Met wow. Stadium booed him out of the stadium. That's right. Uh, and then uh, that was his last uh, hurrah in pro wrestling. Because... And now he's scrubbed. Wow. Yeah. I got... uh, if you search Donald Trump on WWE Network, nothing comes up. So they took him out. Because that... I know Mick Foley was pushing for that. And, well, uh... didn't t- I mean, I think he still comes up in the Hall of Fame. But like, oh, okay. right. in, in the actual videos, like there's uh, little like chapters or whatever, like matches or segments. And his like... His commercial free raw opening segment, instead of it saying Donald Trump buys raw, it's like raw has a new owner. Like they just like his pictures there, but they're strategically uh, <laughs> diminishing his gotcha. contributions to WWE, even though, I mean, he is a member of the WWE Hall of Fame. And maybe that that might be his uh, <laughs> his uh, top uh, qualification going My, forward, from. You know? Yeah, right. The one place that will let him in. The well, WWE Hall of Fame. Well, that brings us to our topic today, uh, Matt. If if you if you don't mind, if the PTSD is uh, you know not so bad today, we're going to take you back into the WWE writers' room, uh, and we are going to join you. We are two novice writers uh, brought in for a, a very secret project. Um, uh, so you know, let's all put on our fantasy goals. We're going into uh, imagination land here. Um, and this is post-inauguration. Uh, the situation is we are three writers in the writer's room, and we get an announcement from Vince McMahon that at the Royal Rumble, Trump's coming back. <laughs> oh, no. Trump is making his return to the WWE. He is no right. longer president. He is, he is back in the fold, and uh, we need to craft a perfect storyline for the ex-president uh, to uh, get us from at least Royal Rumble to WrestleMania. Um, and maybe leave that. it open-ended, too. Uh, guys, um, so Vince did that thing. He looked at the roster, and he hates everyone. Uh, he called Brock. <laughs> Brock's too expensive. He doesn't have that many Brock dates, so um, he's bringing in somebody. Yeah, Goldberg is, uh, you know, Gage has... Uh, you know, virtual school, so Goldberg's got to stay home. <laughs> oh, no. Well, well here, here's the thing. Oh, apparently, Trump can't be the heel. Okay. He's got to be a tweener. Well, all right. All right. Um, okay, so he's a tweener. Yeah. So we're, okay. Do so we want to... Means... <laughs> no, go ahead. No, no, no. You, no, you go. You go. Are we... Um... Hmm. Is this all right? Because we could do all right. So Vince now, in his old age, he needs everything uh, presented before it happens to kill any of the excitement of the pop of the music. So do we tell? Do we do we promote it a week before? <laughs> uh, I think I think we save it for a big rumble. It's a royal rumble moment. Okay. So, so is okay. Trump in? So let's say Trump's in the rumble. Yes. Got it. Okay. I say. So, Women's Rumble? Men's Rumble. Men's Rumble. All right, Trump's in the men's yeah. Rumble. If he's in the women's Rumble, they'll all try to have sex yeah. with him. Look. <laughs> all right. You're... I'm taking notes here. I'm taking notes here. Okay, by good. the way, I got my Sharpie. Yeah. 
their head's in the right place, Darren. That's good TV. That's quality TV. We can't Ellsworth Trump. And also, there's a move. I'm going to say it's probably his finisher. We can't have him doing on women or else the stock owners are going to hate us. Okay. So. <laughs> well, what yeah, we whatever, is- whatever Trump's finishing move is, he's not allowed to do on women. Yes, yes, very much. So. <sighs> well, what we learned at the Battle of the Billionaires when they were rehearsing uh, Trump decking McMahon, rehearsing Trump decking McMahon, <laughs> Trump just punched him in the face as hard as he could. <laughs> <laughs> in I believe it. I, so I 100% a, believe it, yes. So he's, so, a bit of a, he's a bit of a badass. He's a bit yeah. of a brawler. Bad boy, okay. All right. So, so yeah. he's Trump's... got the power of the punch. I think maybe his finisher's just... A punch. Right. Power it could be a punch. punch. And Vince wants us to book him strong. He, he said Roman level booking. Okay, you know what? If we want we want to book him strong, we want him to reflect strength, and we want to sell stuff to kids. We give him an eagle talon that he wears over his hand. Like a Roman Reigns glove, you know, or an AJ <laughs> glove. He can take it off, but it's the fist of freedom. Yeah. So he's got his eagle. Well, we have to remember. We do have to remember he's 74 years old. True. He's... <laughs> physically he's diminished physically he's in a decline physical decline you know he had covid yeah uh well don't worry ricochet will put him over clean you know i know well absolutely ricochet will do the business he's gonna gonna do it the right way he's somebody very talented that we can bury and shit on their their so well he's gotta have i feel like i feel like he's someone like um maybe someone like raven where, uh, you know, Raven's maybe not the best wrestler in the world. So Raven's got the whole like carnival around him. He's got, you know, Stevie and Blumini and the women. Nice. So like, I think Trump needs like a group that he can play off of. I don't think he wins the rumble. Okay. You know, I think he's screwed out of it. Oh, he's kind of like, it's right. He, if he's screwed, if he gets screwed, then he can be angry and upset. He can show Guys, emotion, and that's I'm getting where the a message. Comes in. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. I'm getting a message from Vince. Uh, Trump wins the Rumble. Oh no! <laughs> All right, <laughs> sorry. sorry. Uh, so Trump's uh, got to win. Said not, I don't blame the messenger. Yeah, okay. he's got to win. Yeah. Okay. Sure. All he's right. thinking. He's thinking of the Mania poster. Trump versus whoever's going to be the champion at that. Well, point. who's the well? Who's the match? Is it with Roman? Is it Trump Ooh. versus Roman? That seems to me like we could have we could have some trouble there. I mean, should Trump really be in the match or should we do more of a battle of the billionaires thing? Mm. I think it's I think it should be a battle of the billionaires, but who is who in Vince's eye is the complete opposite of Donald Trump? Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn, easily, yeah. Yeah, but Sami Zayn's Big, a, a loser though. In uh, Vince's eyes. That's the thing, like hmm. Yeah, so Sammy, Sammy Zane's not on the WrestleMania card. No, uh, here, he won't be Here's there. my pitch. We've already done Trump McMahon. Uh, so Vince's idea of the absolute opposite of Donald Trump would be Jesse the Body Ventura. Oh. So oh. we bring back Jesse. Wow. He's got his boa and his leather jacket with fringe on, and he, he is the fiery liberal baby face. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are, yeah, I can feel I can feel people r- rallying against him, just like Daniel Bryan is the Earth's champion or whatever he was. Yeah, that could work. Yeah, yeah. But Jesse's the heel in this situation, right? He's, yeah, exactly. Because he's coming from communist Russia. You know, yeah. he's got his he's show on RT. Union. Yeah, you know, he lives in Mexico now. Like he defected. You know, yeah. he had to actually climb tr- Trump's border wall. Uh, That's something to think about. Maybe the match should involve some kind of wall, some kind of cell. Wow. Yeah, that's kind of Trump's brand. Hmm. You know? maybe, maybe like redo the, the Punjabi prison. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. I think if we go along with Punjabi <laughs> prison. We do but, like, it ta- but it's like a warehouse in New Mexico. Yeah. It's like border, border, border wall match. Yeah. Border wall brawl. Yeah. Like the border just, wall brawl. Yeah. Yeah. That's good and shit. It, might as well just use, you could use the war games cage and like, you know, Basically, it's the same case they keep kids in on the border anyway, so that kind of goes in with the, the oh, whole theme right. of the match. Right, yeah. right. We can have keep all the wrestlers under five foot five that Vince doesn't want to use in that cage. Ray, I mean, Ray's going in there, throw Dominic in there. He's basically a child. Yeah, he's a you child. Know, you could bring uh, Horn Swoggle, a.k.a. AJ Swoggle, as he's known now in, in uh, Impact. Bring him yeah, in. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's always good to bring back. He's a McMahon child anyway. Right. I, I think too. You put uh, 
if 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 uh, the body wins, wrestlers can unionize. So we got Thea Trinidad, his corner, or in a you know in a cage, mm. in the War Games cage. I don't know. Put some big stakes. We know in the U.S. unionization can never win. Yeah, this is this is a <laughs> we're getting into work shoot territory here. <laughs> I'm gonna ask to ask Bruce if we could get Zelina back in the in the fold. Uh, yeah, but, uh, I'm sure Bruce has her number. I'm sure he's got all her contact info. Now, now, who who is who is Trump's? Like, is it Bobby Lashley again? Mm. I could see his fan base not loving Bobby Lashley right. as the face. Of... No, it's definitely not Bobby Lashley. Yeah, yeah. no, it's got to be. Uh, it's got to be Elias and Jackson Riker. You know, those are <laughs> Elias, those are the, the artist. Yeah, but he's know. playing. Yeah, no, but I mean, Trump likes he, rock and roll. Right, you know, he could Trump have a patriotic. Oh. Does yeah. Trump like rock and roll? Absolutely. <laughs> I've only seen him dance to the village people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I forgot that that's like our flight of the Valkyries now. Yeah. So yeah, at the at the Rumble, <laughs> it'll be three, two, one, YMCA. And maybe you give him. Dance. Maybe you give him like a. Maybe his group is like a little YMCA kind of group where you have like a. You just get all like the. Uh, a man in a, a buffalo, <laughs> a sort of a Viking buffalo thing. Ah. There you go. Bring Otis in there. Maybe, maybe ah. a guy dressed like a Roman centurion with flip flops. Um, oh. A guy in full camo. Right, I was going that and way. A camp camo house guy. with shirt. You know, so it's like the Roman, the Nazi, the the shaman. Um, All right, we got to get the Roman, <laughs> the Nazi. The shaman. Now, has Raw been dropped from USA? <laughs> Are they yes. just on Newsmax now? Yeah, Raw's yes. on. So yeah. Raw on Newsmax. Good ninety-minute special uh, televised version on OANN. <laughs> Smackdown's on OANN. Yeah, yeah, that's on OANN. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. That's good yeah. to know. Fuck Fox yeah. News, as they say. So, what do we do about COVID? <laughs> <laughs> like what do we do because i mean this takes place in 2021 mm-hmm. we're not going to be out of the woodwork by by march april and they're gonna need fans so mm-hmm. my pitch is that like wrestlemania in four and five this takes place at a trump uh branded location but this time it takes place in a in a, a location where coronavirus rules aren't quite as strict as other places I say, a mania Mar-a-Lago. Wow, yeah, that's I a nice that's... ring to it. Is you it know? the Thunderdome at Mar-a-Lago, or are we having yes. the full audience? Yeah. <laughs> all right, lost no, I know we have full audience. Okay, full yeah. audience. They're all like doing okay. the conga line. You know, they're yeah. having fun. No masks. There's we could no get masks. Mike Love as a special guest. He oh, could Mike Love singing the singing the uh, WrestleMania theme. I think that's a good idea. Uh. WrestleMania. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> and, you know, Vanilla Ice can, like, rap, uh, I don't know, her business to the ring or something. Yeah. Did, now, has Vanilla Ice and Mike Love ever collaborated? Because that's a great idea. I mean, we need celebrities for WrestleMania. So if we, we get, get Mike Love, we get Vanilla Ice. You got to get uh, Kid Rock. Got to get Kid Rock. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're right. Also uh, Kid Rock. All right. Well, here here's my pitch actually. Yeah. Now that we now that we got Kid Rock in the fold potentially. Look, I'm saying put Jackson Riker in the Buffalo thing. He can be the shaman. Uh, yeah, he's very spiritual I think backstage too. We could get Bobby Fish in the Camp Auschwitz shirt. We could get uh Oh no, wait. Put you know, get Drake Wirtz back in the ring, put him in the Roman outfit. Oh, you yeah. know who Trump would love? Volter. At least parts of his gimmick. Oh I, yeah. I don't think Volter though. Yeah, well, does Volter want a job? <laughs> I'd say Volter quits. <laughs> okay, so we lose Volter. I don't know. I don't know Volter's political views. Um mm. but I I think we're ignoring that. We have the perfect baby face. Because remember, this is baby face Trump. Right. You know, we got the cast of characters, but we need that one that's going to draw people, draw the eyes to the main event of WrestleMania. We get Mark. We get the American Badass. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Oh, wow. dusts off the duster. Right. Yeah. Right. 
Exactly. You can, write, almost make, uh, you can almost do the TNA storyline where you have like the uh, the legends, but I forget what they were called. Brett, you main remember, event right? mafia, yeah. main event mafia who were yeah, baby yeah. faces against the new guys that are heels. That was a great storyline that Raw on Newsmax could potentially, uh, you know, uh, cop from a little bit. You know, it's been a while. It's been, you know, 12, 13 years since they did that. So I think that's a... So you get Mark, Paul. Yeah. And mind you, The Undertaker is retired, but Mark Calloway still has a lot of gas left in the tank. Well, that's right. And he's defending... I mean, Trump has been unfairly maligned. I mean, there's got to be one episode of Raw where there's just like a 40-minute... You know, we need to rewrite history a little bit here. I mean, you know, there's been a lot of news about Trump. You know, he's been in the news lately. <laughs> oh. So, this? you know, they they got to tell that, you know, they got to tell Trump's story. You know, he's been. You well, know, we can we can get that out of the way with a three minute package at the top of the show. People Trump. love our packages. They do really? love the packages. Yeah. yeah. And we know, yeah, the big man upstairs, VKM himself loves them. So we got Mark and Paul. Are there any other uh, old wrestlers with biblical names that we can throw in there? <laughs> Who's Paul? Paul Levesque. Oh, okay. Paul. I'm Paul, saying so... you get. I'm saying you get. Trump is leading. Uh, you know, make WWE great again. You know, I see. the old stars. Oh yeah. Versus the new stars, so you could have the heels in this case could be you know your Daniel Bryan's, your Sami Zayn's, right. your uh, you know uh, who else is a. Uh, like Big E or like Big E. Oh, definitely yeah. Big E's a heel in this <laughs> scenario. Oh God. Yeah. Um, uh, I if we know from uh, again back to Battle of the Billionaires, Trump couldn't remember Bobby Lashley's name. So true. in promotion, he either called him Bobby Lindsay or my big black man. Um, <laughs> that is that so is one hundred percent true a good another good reason why we should stick with biblical names for trump it's easier for him to pronounce easier for him to remember right um there's mark paul brett can you trump, think anybody else? john john Does trump know the bible john john yeah oh uh, yes yeah, so I, I say he, john cena quits <laughs> john cena is right and john cena also has that china connection which trump is uh you know that's a no-no uh, yeah, so right. no john cena what about john layfield oh, there we better, go way better yes JB. So we got Mark, Paul, and John. The disciples. They can be the like couch. the disciples. You can almost yeah. make give Trump like a, you know, like he's like a, a spiritual figure? leader, a Christ figure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. like a Messiah. All right. So we got the disciples. Disciples of Trump. <laughs> cool. <laughs> D-O-T. And then you know J- your Jackson Rikers and stuff. They're they're more like cannon fodder. They're yeah, you know. they're like your Virgil. They, yeah. You know, they're like your uh, you know um, whatever crush. Gotcha. They're gonna. But take, I think it's we're gonna have them bump around with uh, what a retribution for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, retribution. That's true. Now there's a you know th- there's a heel group <laughs> stands for everything. That these guys don't stand for, you know. So are we? Can we just make retribution uh, the boogeyman? Let's say, and then not the, not the literal boogeyman, but uh, like th- that, like your Jackson Rikers and stuff. Uh, they're Trump's cannon fodder. So retribution is Ventura's cannon fodder. It was dastardly. Gosh. Oh, that's right. I forgot Ventura is the because I mean it wouldn't be a WWE storyline if we didn't have. Two old guys <laughs> yeah. opposing each other, you know. Okay, we That's still good. don't have a we still don't have a marquee name. Like, who's Undertaker gonna face at Mania? So you're saying we want to like, like Ventura has his squad. Yeah. Right? Well, so I like, think who's Ventura's, Ventura's Mark Calloway? I think hmm. it's the I think Ventura's got the younger guys. He's got the uh, you know the more I don't want to say current Na- guys. Name them. Really name them real quick because I gotta check their uh, current status. <laughs> Well, let's see. We got Daniel Bryan. He quit. He quit. Okay. Mm. Uh, Sami Zayn. Uh, he's in Japan. He quit. Uh, Biggie. He's Xavier. Uh, he Kofi. He's on SNL now. Dolph. Dolph. <laughs> Dolph. 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 Yeah. Dolph Stain. Dolph Stain. Dolph Stain. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, Sorry, Dolph. Actually, I'm looking at my my roster here. It says Dolph uh, Baron Corbin. 
That's Hulk. about it. Mm, I feel like Baron is more on the disciples of Trump side, where I oh, feel easily. like, you know, he's like, you know, tri- you know, Triple H sees a lot of himself in Baron Corbin. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Same he's with tough. Mark. Yeah. He's tough. tough. Yeah. What tough. about we want we want eyes on this match, and you know, I think this match could use a redo. Goldberg. Mm. You know, who who better to face? some good Nazis and an evil Jewish man. <laughs> All right. Well, that's an idea. That's Please idea. don't I take, it. don't take that out of context. No, we're just going to put that right on there. Yep. We got already got it. Uh, it's that's already been reported. For social. Yeah. Yeah. Vince will understand this angle right away. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's greedy. I like it. So, oh, so, I so, see it. I can we still got to figure out. We still got to figure out who's left. I like Goldberg. Mm-hmm. I like Goldberg. He is a little old, you know. He's not young anymore. He's no spring chicken. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, they had that match where uh, both Undertaker and Goldberg like discussed each other. <laughs> Dis- yeah. they disassociated. <laughs> well, we have Undertaker Goldberg, but we could have badass Undertaker, libertarian badass Undertaker versus Alistair Black cult figure. Be quick. <laughs> Oh, never mind. Yeah, we're, it's, uh, not so great. it's not going so good. <laughs> the roster's been the right, uh, He's Rev Pro Champion, though, so that's cool. That's uh, exciting. Um, um, what about, uh, well, he's not young either. Uh, Sin Car is texting me. He's asking me what he's doing this week again. Should I just ignore <laughs> him like usual? Yeah. I, I, does he want to debase himself for this storyline? <laughs> he's willing to do anything. That would be a good. Yeah, that would be a good guy to throw in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. especially we could. I guess we could have Trump uh, as a ramp up to this uh, match. We could have him throw him over the wall. Yeah. <laughs> Symbolically. The, I forgot. This is a border wall brawl. Right. We're yes. Building to. If in case you're just listening now, you want to get caught up here. We're building to a border wall brawl at WrestleMania 37, Mar-a-Lago, with uh, the disciples of Trump. Uh, Mark Calloway, Paul Levesque, John Layfield against Jesse Ventura's what, synd- syndicate? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I'd say we bring in, you know, uh, Libertarian Glenn. What about because Corey- there is a split in the Republican Party now, uh, and oh. Glenn is a Republican, so oh, I think that's he's true. on the Libertarian side. Wow, that's uh, true. So yeah. It's uh, Glenn, Glenn and Bill. <laughs> Glenn, Bill, Bill. And who's our other big name? We got, hmm. we're, 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 how about the big show? Paul. Yeah. Another Paul. Paul. Yeah. Another Paul. Okay. Another Paul. Uh-huh. All right. So we got Paul. All right. It almost sounds like we lost the rights to the character names. <laughs> like Vince possible. had to create a, a new company. Yeah. yeah. Uh, TNT has a show called The Big Show now. So uh, he's Paul now. Yeah, I think that's a real thing. I think there's yeah, go big a... show. Yeah, go I big almost, show. I, uh, is on it. I always have yeah, I always have to make sure I turn off AEW as soon as it's over, so I don't have to watch that. Uh, <laughs> and also, this was poo pooed last week, but Burt Kreischer is the basis of Van Wilder. That's my little trivia factoid for the second week in a row. Oh, good job, Brett. Oh. Yeah. All right, that's <laughs> a lot of fun for you. I didn't know that. Yeah. All right, so we we need one more big. So we're headlining Mania Man Tag in a yeah. re- retrofitted Punjabi prison. Do we have luchadors on the outside trying to get in? Yeah, you get Sin Cara, uh, Mysterio. Like you said, the Mysterio family will be ringside. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, who else do we got? Uh, uh, Lindsay Dorado. In yeah, Grand Metal League. Nobody. I feel like I feel like you know is is TJP signed anywhere? I feel like he'll throw a mask on. Oh yeah, is he? I mean, a... He's not Mexican, but but in the eyes matter. of the story, in line, this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in this world, I think he'll pass. Uh, yeah, we got to get Kalisto in there. Yeah, uh, we could bring Jack Gallagher out. Gallagher, I'm sorry. I mean, is he's he a British fu- man. Was anybody fired during speaking out from WWE? Because they're back. <laughs> Rich. Uh, uh, mm, no, that was before. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, I don't think fine. so. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I guess they didn't, did they? Good. That's good to know. Enzo? I think it was I Jack Gallagher, right? Oh, Enzo. Enzo. I guess, yeah. 
Enzo and Big Cats. That's the new guys. Yeah. You know, <laughs> at least they could at least be. Like, okay, so here's here's my idea. Yeah. So you get to Elimination Chamber, right? Because you got the pay-per-view in between. So you got to have something for that. Maybe Jesse brings back Enzo and Cass, and the old guys defeat them. So now he's got to bring back old guys. He's got to bring back his own old guys to beat the new, to beat Trump's old guys. You know what I mean? Can I just say, I, I, I wanted to, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I was like, wait, did WWE call TJP a Mexican? And no, they always acknowledge that he was Filipino. It's Joaquin uh, Wild, aka Zima Ion, DJ Z, who is now portraying a Mexican in Legado del Fantasma on NXT. Oh wow! So yeah, throw those guys outside of the cage. I, I was gonna say uh, on a real note, it was Filipino Flash because I wrote it a million times. Ah, <laughs> cool. Yes, fun times. Two hundred five live, baby. Oh yeah. I uh, on a real note, there was a three of us that were put in a room and we had to come up with every gimmick on 205 Live or attempt to. Wow. And uh, it was referred to as the uh, Declaration of Independence of 205 Live because it well, took us like a whole day. That's all it took. And that's all it took <laughs> our founders. One day. Hey, 205 Live was real fun for a while. I liked uh, it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did uh, all of Neville's. I did all of his King of the Cruiser race oh stuff. God. That was like my guy. So he's great. The- and yeah. he's now the uh, arguably the best wrestler in the world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, he's great. He's amazing. He's unbelievable. He's oh my yeah. god, I love, I love him. Yeah, uh, I just watched a great. And this is a, 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 a my big show and tell <laughs> for this week. Uh, I just watched a really interesting match: um, Cara Noir versus a uh, Pac uh, in a, I think it was called Limitless Wrestling or something. It shot like a movie. Caro Noir is this wrestler who does like a black swan gimmick. He's just like <laughs> like a tortured soul. Uh, and he faces Pac, who's always great. Uh, check that match out. It's very interesting. My dream cool. match, my WWE dream match like three years ago was uh, Pac or Neville versus Brock Lesnar. I thought that <laughs> would have been the greatest match. Because there was something about neville especially when he came back to 205 live and he kind of like he started growing the facial hair he started like he just like became this like complete wrestler and he was so badass like he's just the scariest man and great promos right his promos were amazing dude he was he was the best to work with because like he knew what he wanted and then i kind of got his voice pretty quick i mean you know it's you just wanted to be a badass. And a lot of times there's right. like stuff. It's like, is are people going to believe this? But you look at him, you can believe he's a legit killer. And he was. Once he, yeah. Yeah. Once he grew the facial hair, I mean, his work is always fantastic and his, yeah, he's, he's great. You did a good job with him. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that, he was a crown piece and Drew Gulak uh, oh. was like my guy. Like the, I had to I mean, fight. To fight to get him on TV and it, it worked out. It took it's a long so time. Great. The PowerPoint yeah. stuff is so yeah. funny. <laughs> Gulak, they, I most... think they still are doing it because on Raw, really? Drew Gulak, uh, he was like trying to pitch himself to be in the Rumble uh, in a match with AJ Styles. And uh, but before he was put in the match, uh, he gave Adam Pierce a flash drive. <laughs> <laughs> Which I presume had like a PowerPoint about why he should be in the Royal Rumble. Um, they so. didn't really get into the detail, but I was like, that is a nice good character consistency. That's awesome. Glad they kept that up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Back, back. Yeah, yeah. We got to get back to the border wall brawl. We need uh, one more member of uh, Team Body. Team Body. Okay. All right. We're talking about old preferably, guys. Yeah. Preferably over the age of 45. All right. So we've got. Oh, wait, well, we, we got, got Big Show and Kane. Well, Kevin right? Nash? Uh, no, Ke- Kevin's a liberal. He's like yeah. he's like super progressive. But he, he's on b- the body side, right? Are you, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Hot yeah, hand. I mean, <laughs> I guess he's probably as progressive as the body is, but yeah. So we got Glenn, mm-hmm. we got Mayor, Mayor Glenn, mm-hmm. Goldberg, Big Show. On the other side, we've With got Retribution. Mark. With retribution as their like uh, whatever bumping dummies yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah. yeah we got because none of them can take bumps. <laughs> no, yeah, they all none of them can fall anymore. <laughs> the match is just the young guys running it and getting punched <laughs> by <laughs> the old guys. Uh, all right, so we got Mark, we got Mark, Paul, 
John Layfield. So it's only three on. So we got three on three. We got yeah. it. And then they've got you know the Forgotten Sons and then folks peppered in there, right. uh, as as the 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 cooers or the insurgents or whatever you want to call them. All right, insurgents so, is a good. Yeah. yeah. What do we do? Because you know Trump's not coming alone. What do we do with Ivanka? What do we do with uh, DJ TJ? In case you don't know, that's Donald J. Trump Jr. Do we we get a nice uh, American theme car to drive them out to the ring? Yeah. Okay, we got a nice yeah. car. Yeah. What about instead of a car? What about a boat? Yeah. That's even better. Yeah. Okay, we'll get a boat. I mean, we're at, we're near the water anyway, so you could make yeah. a grand entrance. A boat. Maybe it can be one of those like airplane boats. Like a boat. Yeah. I'd say because he's such a good orator and he's so charming, he could be the host of WrestleMania. <laughs> He could be the rock of the show. Like he'll come out and he'll be like, "Is everybody having a good time tonight?" And yeah, he's known for that. He's he's known for his public speaking skills. Yeah. Oh, guys, I got a call from. Oh, it's from Kevin Dunn. He left a message. I'll just play it. Yeah, guys. So um, we're gonna have the Blue Angels. They're gonna fly over, and they're actually we want to have Trump eject out of one and have it crash nearby to have a big. <laughs> Uh, and there's gonna be a big flame that's red, white, and blue, and then he'll parachute in. And these these you guys got to meet these these fighter pilots. They're so they're just so cocky. I love them. <laughs> All right, yeah. cool. All right, so he Trump's seems cool. <laughs> I know I'm new here, but he seems cool. Yeah, yeah. he's a uh, you know he's a guy. He, you'll meet him. You'll talk he's to a, him. He's yeah. the kind of guy like I want to like trade Spotify info with him. You know, right. Well, I mean, if you really want to know what's on a Spotify, it's just Kid Rock. And uh, mm. for for a shoot, um, he, I, he has been heard saying, Kid Rock has an excellent discography. I mean, nobody has a better discography than Kid Rock. It's a real thing, he said. Yeah, and you know what? What a guy to have in charge of production for 35 years. <laughs> That's the yeah. guy. You know. well, yeah, Glenn, well, Bill- well, you guys heard what he said. Uh, we need to... <laughs> I'm a little worried because Trump, yeah. we need Trump for this main event, and you know he is a sixty uh, first seventy four can't have a can't have a ramp with a slope at the very least. <laughs> no, he gotcha. would tumble right down. We need to get one of those like WrestleMania three carts to bring him out to the ring. <laughs> yeah, uh, but but Smart. if he's gonna jump out of a a plane, I don't. We already had some issues in '99 with with entrances like this. This seems even more dangerous. Uh, true, true. You're right. Yeah, I, mean, I, I I say he goes for it. What's the worst thing that can happen? Who's who's somebody from NXT we could put in the like sort of Borat Trump suit? Uh, let's see, Was it six feet. I mean, somebody that like is this. Gargano. What about t- oh, you know, you know, you know, you know Tucker. Tucker. <laughs> yeah. That'll be oh, Tucker. Tuck, Tucker. Do yeah. He didn't quit. I mean, he's going to know. He's yeah. got student loans he's got to pay off. <laughs> okay. So we shave Tucker. We put him, the wig sh- on. Yep. He yeah. makes the jump. And then uh, Trump can kind of pop out from like an Undertaker, you know, yeah. uh, trap door or yeah, whatever. He, tr- I think Trump gets everybody's entrance. He gets a little bit of the dead man. He gets a little bit of, you know, Gladiator Paul. You get a little of that JBL money coming down. Maybe a little Rainmaker. You know? Oh. Yeah. That's definitely him. I see billion dollar bills, his face. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Love Young gold boys. gold dollars. Gold dollars. Gold. Yeah. We should just throw gold on the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, throw it's gold. Like molten gold. Yeah. You know, Vince loves angels come throwing out uh steel from <laughs> miles <laughs> above. Cool. Good. Well, uh we, we need a finish for this match. Hmm. Oh boy, something that'll really make this whole like this whole thing. I mean, that's that's what they say. Like you know, on SNL, the hardest thing is like finishing the sketch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, do we have Team Trump reenacting the planting the flag of Iwo Jima, but it's into the body's head? I guess. Yeah. I well, we can't hurt the body, so. True. Um, yeah, he's got he's he's in traction twelve hours a day anyway. Well, we'll he's plan it for the slapjacks uh, head. <laughs> Hmm. Slapjack T bar. Yeah, they can. You know, I mean, we're the new guys around here, Brett. You know, and Matt. I mean, you're great, but you know, you're not. You don't have that. You don't have. You know, you haven't been doing it forever. You know, yeah. 
what's somebody like Michael Hayes going to think? What What's the kind of finish he's going to go for in a match like this? It has to be big. Uh, it has to draw money. Uh, he's going to want Roman in it. Roman has to do something. Oh, no. Roman comes down, and it's whose side is he on? He's like Sting. Yeah. We put Roman in the Sting position. That's great. Yeah. I mean, we could run that a whole year. Yeah, Jeez. we have to do this in two months, though. <laughs> right. I mean, Vince is going to want it paid off the following next, the, the day after that Raw. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we got Rome. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, Roman, I, uh, it, honestly, if Roman does the Vince thing at uh, the Austin Rock match. He comes in with a chair and he definitively wins the match for Team Trump. Okay, that's a big move. And and says, hit the road, Heyman. I know what kind of person you are. <laughs> and you know, it's like some inferred. You know, we, we've already done the Goldberg thing, you know. Yeah. yeah. You're right. Might as well, yeah, yeah, put it out yeah. there. <laughs> and, you know, Heyman does a great job. Yeah. He's also like a He'll sell it. He'll sell yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, they could. Who could we have card him off? I don't want to go that far, but who would be the one to cart him off, if you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, Braun Strowman has put people in ambulances. Oh, yeah. Oh, Braun, oh. yeah. I thought you were setting me for the Valter thing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess in Imperiums, we could call them up from NXT. Thank well, this, this is good. And then we do a big party at the end, bring Santa out, like those Christmas in your houses. <laughs> Yeah, uh huh. The whole Trump family's there, like Calgary Stampede with the Hart family. Yeah, well, let's just say Ivanka's been involved in the women's division. She's she's won the title from. Yeah, her and Charlotte. <laughs> yeah, I think her, Charlotte, Lacey Evans, uh, Candice LeRae. Um, they stripped uh, Sasha Banks whatever. and Bailey of their citizenship. Yeah. They're gone. <laughs> They're down in AAA now, uh, because you know, you know why, but. Uh, <laughs> It's pretty good, honestly. Well, I think Boston is going to be happy with this. I'm yeah. going to say this might be this definitely be better a better WrestleMania than uh, whatever they're going to do this year. They're definitely right. I mean, it'll definitely draw eyes. Um, yeah, that's what the boss wants. Um, also, I feel like this is. Yeah, he was. This is actually probably his favorite match that the creative team has ever booked. To be honest, <laughs> it's got all his favorites. <laughs> yeah. Road Dunn's think, happy. Michael yeah. Hayes is happy. Uh, JBL texted in. He said he's really ready to do business. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He says he owes some receipts to those retribution guys for what they did. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. He, he, he texted, uh, I'm really happy for this conglomeration of people. And, and then he, in parentheses, I had to look up conglomeration right before I texted you this. <laughs> and then That's he sends cool. a screenshot of uh, him googling conglomeration, but then you see you know my favorite it, like, muscle girl porn. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. my favorite part of uh, JBL is just how intellectually curious he is. Yeah, he's a yeah. he definitely is a smart guy who I've never heard uh, in the office or anything demeanor. Uh, no. Kind of that's just his way. Right. I mean, you know, every using calling, telling Byron Saxon that Devon Dudley's his grandfather at every meeting was a good way to kick off every meeting it's and not so make it awkward. funny. <laughs> yeah. He just like I don't even know where he gets that from. He's hilarious. Oh wow, that's really good. Yeah, he's a great person. He's a really good guy. Um, great with money, which is something I admire in a fella. Yeah, his wife. Uh, for real, is his wife like a? She's like a TV anchor or something, right? Like a money, like Fox. I think so, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Fox no. Business well, person. JBL Fox. was a Fox News. It was like a Fox News analyst for a minute. Apparently, they, I mean. She tamed the beast. She got him to cut that hair. Oh, Put the bull whip away. Mm. Bull whip away. He kept the cowboy hat. And he has, he like, sure did. He, for a guy who wears a cowboy hat, he walks like a horse. I mean, he's so broken. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's mean to say, but also, fuck that guy. Um. Yeah. Wow. Well, this this uh puts a nice bow on it. You know, the heroes win. John Paul Mark and Don. <laughs> um, but yeah. we have one. We have one more fantasy uh, booking segment. Yeah, it's fan fiction that, this week only. Yeah. 
to to wrap up the show and uh, <laughs> i know we've done two weeks of fan fiction last week we had uh, the sopranos go to wwf raw <laughs> next week it'll be all reality yeah next week we'll, we'll be back to reality but we do this segment every week it is called the worst royal rumble we're uh, putting aside the trump uh, reality that we just created this is a separate reality that's been uh, built up for the past few weeks uh, with various members of uh, uh, the wrestling club picking entrance to the show. Currently in the ring right now, we have Leonardo da Vinci, MGK, Ira Glass, Hudson Hawk, Megan the Stallion, Judge Janine Pirro, the ghost of Michael Alleg, not the actual guy, but his ghost, even though we have some other dead people in there, and just added last week by Nick Nanny, Dobby the house elf, which is uh, kind of how Taz says Darby. Um, and Alex Jones, uh, picked by Colette Arend. So, uh, and we I should also mention, we do have Effie, Judy Martin, and Del Close uh, held on the airport tarmac in Saudi Arabia. Uh, the Saudi royal forces have uh, tried, have prevented them from leaving um, and are now holding them. However, they are still technically not eliminated. They went under the rope to leave the building. So, with the Vinky, MGK, Ira, Hudson, Paula, Megan, Janine, Michael, Dobby, Alex, Matt, you get to pick the next entrant into the worst Royal Rumble. So this is purely out of hearing Vince go. Is it entertaining? Yeah. Can we? Can, can I, we? Can we get Matt on screen? I, I want. I want. I want to see. You know, <laughs> pitch this like we are the creative team. All right, guys, we all know Vince. We all know he has those things he likes to go to when he thinks people will laugh uncontrollably. And um, some of those things are poop jokes. That's one. And the other is um, tiny people. And um, I feel like he, look, I know he's gone, but Vern Troyer somehow fits into this group of people that I'm seeing. Absolutely, and, um, yeah. And I think it would pop Vince, and that's what we got to do. It's all about popping the the boss. Um, don't worry about the WWE universe. Make the boss laugh. Okay, so Stop. your entrant <laughs> is Vern Troyer. Yes. What music does he come out to? Huh. Uh, I want to say I'm going to stick with the Village People thing, Macho Man. Okay. Yeah, because I feel like Vince will see it as a joke that this guy thinks he's a macho man, and that will pop the boss, and that's how you keep your job. I think if I'm Kevin Dunn, uh, that camera's going straight to Dobby, of a, a standoff between Vern and Dobby, because they're both oh, around the same yeah. size. Yeah. I, I've never seen Harry Potter, so this is just an educated guess, uh, but he seems that's, like that's he's my the guess. same size. Yeah, My guess, too. I haven't seen it. I was like, is that? No, that's not Lord of the Rings guy. That's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Small. Um, so uh, do we have some eliminations? I lost you there for a sec. Oh, sorry. Uh, do we have any uh, eliminations? Oh. This? Let me see. The, can I see the... Uh... Sure. We've got <laughs> Megan the Stallion. We've mm. got Alex Jones, Judge Jeanine Pirro, Machine Gun Kelly. We've got... Leonardo da Vinci. We've got uh, Dobby the House Elf and Ghost of Michael Alec. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling, I mean, I want to say like Dobby and Troy, like they like exchange a few punches, but I feel like Alex Jones is like right next to him talking trash and they go, they both go for him to take him out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he's, he's being the bully in this situation. Right. Mm. Now, Janine and Alex have uh, formed a sort of coalition. She's got her wine glass with her. Uh, do, does anything happen there? Hmm. She's going to end up having to like peel Troy off of her face. Like Troy's going to be up <laughs> in her face. He's going to wreck her, dude. Like, he's like a xenomorph face hugger. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, <laughs> suffocates them. I mean, it's like a it's a sleeper. I guess you could say a sleeper hold. Okay. Uh, do, does Alex Jones get eliminated? Right. I think he, I think his foot, his left foot touches, but the ref doesn't see it. Okay, yeah, he stays in. Yeah, yeah. So, so he is, he is safe. He's safe. He's safe. Yeah. All right. 
We got some, <laughs> some audio cues. I don't know. Uh, well, uh, we have entrant number 16, Vern Troyer. Is he in the mini me outfit or are we getting sort of like casual Vern? I think I think this is like later Vern. Like, he's, okay. He, he might have. He'll shoot the mini me face. He'll do that. Like, that's his his entrance as he does that. But he's uh-huh. just Vern. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kind of For sad. a second there, I thought you were talking about Vern Gagne, and I was like, oh, wow, business is about to pick up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt, thank you so much for being a guest on the Wrestling Club. Uh, you know, the, our apologies to Bardia. We'll, we'll get him on a future episode. Uh, what a insane thing to happen. Yeah. yeah. Thank, you, thank you guys for having me on. Bardia, I hope you're okay. But yeah, it was we love fun. you, Bardia. Yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, any plugs? I know you got a lot of projects you're working on, Matt. Um, yeah, uh, just to plug some stuff really quick. If you guys are online, um, yeah, there's uh, there's some. Eh, there's, don't worry about it. No, <laughs> people yeah, want to know more about it. There's so much stuff. Okay, uh, please uh, check out um, Zoo Idiots is a cartoon that I work on and I do voices on. Um, that's out online, and there's another. Uh, I guess I'll call it a, a tone poem called Reveries, uh, Part Two, which my good friends Matt Baratz and Anthony Oberbeck, who you guys know, uh, they created. I did a lot of special effects on it, and so that oh, was wow. a lot of fun. It was um, great. Yeah, yeah. So just doing Reveries that One is really great. I have yet to see Reveries Two, so yeah. I'm very excited for it. And, but yeah, yeah, should be. Yeah, it's fun. It's all of it's been fun, uh, but yeah, just doing fun projects like that. So, Darren, you've got your WFMU show this Saturday night as we're usual. Going, we're going live at three AM, baby. So if you, uh, you know, just got stuff keeping you up, don't feel so good in your life. Tune in; it'll be great. Got a lot of music. Played a lot of new music last week. More new music this week, and I have a couple guests in the next couple of weeks. So maybe I'll have a little more uh, to plug about it. But uh, yeah. And a couple of weeks ago, I did an MF Doom tribute. You should check out. I did a, a best of 2020, which I counted. I listened to like my list of like top, you know, everybody does their like top of 2020. I pared mine down from like 650 songs to like 30. So it's, it's good. Okay. I listened to a lot of music last year. Yeah. Not this year though. I'm done. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, and I'll, I'll continue my trend of not plugging something I made this year because I'm in the middle of a creative drought. However, oh, that's right. And a, and a, pand- and a pandemic that's locally uh, very, quite destructive. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm here in Los Angeles, California. But uh, we, yeah, uh, <laughs> Matt, Matt, you were a guest on our special mania episode. So I'll plug that. It's great. It's got big Dave Meltzer. Oh, we got, boy. We got big we Lita. Got Lita, big Lita. We got a uh, low key was there. Low, low key, key was there, there. creeping yeah. everyone out. Yeah. With Selena De La Renta and we had Dalton Castle and we had the nobodies. Um, it, it was a real fun Keith Ellie Greenberg who was on the show. It's a fun, uh, true, like dream come true night for me. A little the, sloppy in some places. Bardia has a great yeah. turn as well. Oh, that's right. It's what like a, a cyber chic or something. Yeah. Darren, Darren and Lita fight each other. Yeah, Lita, Lita finally vanquishes uh, uh, your rival, the skull fucker Harley Tucker. Mm-hmm. It's quite and a. I, yeah, I have to say, I thought it was one of the craziest endings to anything ever. Movie, TV show. I had no idea it was coming, and I was part of it. It's yeah. Like, please yeah. watch it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we we there there was. There, there element to the schmaz ending. I'll say that much. <laughs> it happens. Yeah. yeah. Jeff Cannonball goes through a table and it splashes all over Selena De La Renta. <laughs> so, like, somebody had a water there. And it was a, a, a tense situation because I did have low key just stalking me behind let's camera. Put it, yeah, let's put it this way Selena, she ain't returning our calls no more. <laughs> Hey, she's she's do but she's in uh, Mexico City looking up the bones of Mil Muertos. Last I heard on uh, MLW. Oh, that's right. Oh, MLW. Yeah, we'll have the well. It's tune in next week. We're gonna have a nice uh, a nice recap of the last four years of MLW storylines <laughs> for everybody. Uh, yeah. So you can get you all caught up there. Uh, yeah, that's all great. Right. What do we got coming up? We got anything coming up next week, Brett? 
Uh, we don't have a booked guest yet. So, uh, all right. You know. If you want to be on Wrestling Club, uh, hit us up at uh, Instagram, <laughs> uh, uh, Wrestling Club WFMU, or on Twitter, Wrestling underscore Club underscore. And uh, you know what? We're, we're you can just join us. You can come on. Yeah, tweet at us uh, if what guests you want to see on the show. Yeah, uh, that's a good what idea. Wrestlers are tolerable to talk to, and uh, or or what comedians like wrestling or musicians or or what have you. Yeah, maybe you got an uncle that you know used to like Pedro Morales. We'll talk to him. I'll talk to him. I don't mind. Yeah, Darren will talk off mic though. Yeah, well, that'll be off mic. That'll be more of a private conversation. But hey, you know what? You got to start somewhere. Yeah, and if you've made it this far in the podcast and you haven't clicked that subscribe button, please do so. Oh, leave a yeah. leave a review. Yeah. Let's, let's a positive a, review. Five grows. stars on the Melcher scale. Please. All right. Well, uh, that, that's it for us. Darren, take us out. All right. For Brett and for Matt, this is Darren. Wrestling Club at WFMU. Thanks for tuning in.